John Prescott immediately swung round and landed a punch straight on his jaw. The man then wrestled the Deputy Prime Minister onto his back and held him down over a small wall as police and Labour Party officials tried to release him. No, it isn't yes or no. Listen, when it I ask yes you, no. you whether in phone tapping, when, when, when I asked you a straight question, were you involved in phone tapping in an interview we were doing, you say, oh, my job is to ask the question. No, you're involved in the process like everybody else. It's not a straight yes or no. Hi, Dave. Congratulations. Cheers, John. Nice to see you. I just ask him to point out what this government's done in its period of office compared to what they did in theirs. You gave us boom and bust and we gave an economy of economic growth. You put three million, he, 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 <laughs> Mr Speaker, <laughs> oh I'll do it again, he gave the country boom and bust and we delivered sustained economic growth that we haven't seen for decades. He put three million on the dole, we put two and a half million people back to work. And he, the most scandalous statement of all, doubled the number of pensioners in poverty and we lifted a million out of poverty. I'll swap mistakes with him and record and you'll hear more and more of it, whether I'm Deputy Prime Minister or not, though can I say I'm the longest serving Deputy Prime Minister. I've seen off five of the Tory Mayors, four of the Liberal ones, and I'm still here. Again, I think, now. So you would support the illegal strikes? Why has that become an issue to you and the other fellow there, sir? Well, what has, why has that become an issue? William Higgs. Yeah. <clears throat> when the Deputy Prime Minister said of local government last week, if you want to have a unitary, then you can have a ballot, discuss it with the people, but if you want it, fine. What exactly did he mean? <laughs> I think it's very, very clear, and I'm just surprised. <laughs> I'm just surprised the right honourable general can't follow it. You know, the Daily Mail and yourselves just putting the media to the front. Let us talk about the policies of the Labour Party. That's Lord what Prescott, they want to hear. With, with talk about the economy. With great respect, Lord Prescott, you know, because you've been in this game a long oh, time. Oh, hang on, hang on. Are you going to insult me now when you use the word respect? You're always leading with something else. What is it? Oh. <laughs> What's the face of Labour that you want to present in this campaign? <laughs> Not one with soul soap over, obviously. <laughs> But one, it's a caring party, social justice, it's those traditional values, you know, we're con concerned about education, health, um, s***. Can we go again? Yeah, okay, fine, off you go, go on then. The Deputy Prime Minister got off his bus at Rill in North Wales and quickly realised that to reach the local Labour Club, he had to run the gauntlet of a group of largely countryside and fuel protesters. As he walked through them, a local man chucked an egg at him almost at point-blank range. John Prescott immediately swung round and landed a punch straight on his jaw. The man then wrestled the Deputy Prime Minister onto his back and held him down over a small wall as police and Labour Party officials tried to release him. Eventually they freed him, but Mr Prescott's problems weren't over. Another protester then jostled him before Labour members and police managed to get a very shaken-looking cabinet minister into the safety of the doors. Lawyers think it very unlikely that Mr Prescott could be charged. I'm for the many, not the few. How much, uh, how okay. much, do you, how much are you earning in the House of Lords these days, Lord Come Prescott? On. I get £300, £150 goes to uh, my secretary and £150 goes to a hotel. Do you do that? Do you spend all your bloody expenses? No, you don't. You're coining it in and asking me about 300 pounds. I live in the north. 
I have to travel down to London. That's half of it. And I do have to live because I haven't got the kind of living accommodation in London, right? So that's where it goes. You want to put that into your analysis? What would you think of that? Have you ever been on strike? Uh, I no, have actually, haven't, yes. Of course. I've got a big wage, uh, though, haven't you? Been... People out in different parts to come out and vote. That's why I've got on the bus. It's good to vote. We've got to get our own people out, as well as many people are becoming switching over to join Tony Blair and the new Labour Party. And it gives us the kind of result we've got in the will. I think that's good. It's so nice, after 37 years, to know that I will be missed. <laughs> but I'm not leaving the house yet. And I will still play my part. I won't be whinging on the back benches that I hear some of my colleagues do from time to time. <laughs> I'll be supporting this government that has done a wonderful job in the last ten years. And I have to say to him, I noticed he wasn't in the first session. Is that his fee to be in the first session was too expensive for this one? <laughs> or is the charging for Tory overtime rate at your speaking rates is too much money? I do find it amazing the Honourable Member talks about small amounts of jobs regarding to manufacturing, important as they are, when his government was responsible for two million jobs. Two million jobs being lost from our manufacturing sector, which we still have to deal with. And as regard to the minimum wage, I can say I was one of those who did receive minimum wage under the Wages Council Act before the previous administration actually abolished them as working as a commie chef in hotels. And, and so it's not misunderstood on the opposite side. A commie chef is somebody who's a trainee chef and has no political significance whatsoever. <laughs> Though, though, though I'm not so sure that the hotel manager felt that at the time. <laughs> and I think it's as well to remember that what we are doing about fair employment rights will be welcomed by millions of workers who are at work today. And I must say that the advice he, get, he has given to pose that question is as probably as inaccurate as what he gave to Jonathan Aitken when he was the advisor. <laughs> or indeed expressed in the exaggerated language as when he was the chair of the Federation of Conservative Students before it was disbanded by Norman Tebbit for being too right-wing. 